Quasar has a few ways to model selection. One of them is the radio button, one of them is a checkbox, and we've also got Quasar's toggle component, which we're going to talk about in this video. Q dash toggle, and then let's model something. V dash model is equal to selection. And then I can say const selection is equal to a ref, we'll import ref, and we'll set that equal to, how about false by default? Throw this down there, and let's go ahead and get started. So now I can toggle that on and off, and just to show you that really is working, we'll have a pre-tag, and inside of there, I'll say selection so we can view it. And let's change this to a column so that that pre-tag comes underneath. And there we go. We can also add in a label. So we could say, for example, blue here. And how about we also set a color equal to blue. And now we've got a blue toggle that we can put on and off. And if you want that label on the other side, you can say left dash label and that'll throw it onto the other side. Good to know. Another thing we can do is say keep color. So at the moment, we can't really tell that this is a blue toggle. So we can say keep dash color, meaning at least we know that it's blue now. And when we toggle it, we can see it's even more blue. So that's kind of a way that we can maintain styling throughout our application. Now let's change this to orange, orange. And then another thing we can do is set the icon. So let's say icon is equal to alarm. And now we can basically put it on and off and it's like toggling an alarm on and off. Another thing we can do is say checked dash icon and change the icon for when it's checked on. So let's set that equal to check. And now when it's on, we get a tick. And when it's off, we get that alarm icon. And look, to be honest, I don't think I like keep color with a toggle component because that kind of looks like it might be on to me. And so that's a little bit confusing. So I think it's probably better not to use keep color, but I'm sure this is one of those things where it depends on the context. So I'm gonna take that off and we'll move on. Another thing we can do is use toggling inside of an array. So let's change this to an array. And all we have to do now is set this equal to val and then set a value for that like alarm. And now when we toggle this on, it basically puts the value of alarm in and out of the array. So this is really cool because handling that kind of logic behind the scenes can actually be kind of annoying because you have to do like, you have to find the element in the array, you have to take it out and stuff like that, which can be frustrating. So it's kind of cool that Quasar gives us that functionality by default. This is especially good if I just get rid of some of these. This is especially good if you have more than one toggle. So now I can just have multiple toggles. This next one I can say blue. And then this one I can say green. And then let's make the value the color as well. Save it. And there we go. Now we can toggle these on and off. That would actually be really handy in an app to be able to say which colors are included in something, maybe like a palette. That's kind of a nice, um, a nice experience. But anyway, let's move on to the next thing. I'll get rid of that. And I'll change this back to maybe false so that we got a simpler example. And we can push on. Now, if I get rid of false here, notice that we get an indeterminate state. That's what this is called, indeterminate. We don't know if it's true or if it's false. So if behind the scenes, we don't have a true false value being toggled. It's just going to show this indeterminate state. Let me get rid of value there, actually. That might be confusing it too. Yeah, so there we go. Now, notice if I say on and off, we can no longer go back to an indeterminate state. We can have indeterminate by default, but we can't go back to it. So what I can do here is say toggle dash indeterminate. Indeterminate, that's kind of hard to spell on a keyboard. And it means we can go true, false, and indeterminate. So if you need that extra functionality, if you need to be able to represent an indeterminate state, you have that option available to you. And by the way, this is one thing that separates a toggle from a radio button, for example. Checkbox has indeterminate states as well. So there are some situations where you might need either a toggle or a checkbox, but you can't use a radio because indeterminate states don't exist with radio buttons. And there are reasons for that that I won't go into right now. So another thing we can do is say false dash value and change what the false value actually is. So for example, maybe it's just the string off. And then we could set the true value equal to the string true. And now take a look at this. Behind the scenes is actually going to show the string true and the string off. And by the way, you probably can't actually tell that. So let's just say negative and positive. That might be a better example here. 
Yeah, there we go. So you can model that in any way that you like. Now we actually get the same thing with indeterminate value as well. So this API has been really well thought out. We can say indeterminate value and set that equal to dunno, which is an Australian way of saying, I don't know. We like to shorten things in Australia. Maybe add a capital there. And now let's bring back in toggle indeterminate. And so now we can say positive, negative, I don't know. <laughs> there we go. So we got all those uh, possibilities available to us. Now there is one other little nuance that I want to point out here. Let's get rid of all of this indeterminate functionality, save it. And once again, by default, we've got indeterminate. And now notice that the first thing that happens when I click on the toggle is it's set to positive. Now what you can do is change the order, meaning that the first time you click on it, it's negative. So in other words, what comes after indeterminate, positive or negative? And in order to change that, we can say toggle dash order. By default, it's TF, true, false. So maybe it's better to actually remove these true and false values to make the example a bit easier to understand. Yeah, and this means that when we toggle out of indeterminate, first it will go to true, then false. So we click on here and first it goes to true. Now let's change it to false true, refresh the page, and now when I click on here, the first value is false. So we've got that little bit of extra functionality where we can change the order here. So that's the toggle order. And this also makes a lot of sense when you say, for example, toggle indeterminate. Once again, we're bringing this back in. <laughs> and now you can say false, true, indeterminate. False, true, indeterminate. And you can change that order to whatever you like. All right, getting rid of this, let's see what else we can do. We can also say disable, meaning that we can't change the value. I've spoken about this before. Another thing we can do is change the size. So let's set that equal to extra small, and we can go from extra small all the way up to extra large. Or if you want even more wriggle room, you can put it on 150 pixels or whatever value you want there. So now we've got this monstrous looking <laughs> toggle component. We'll get rid of that and see what else we can do. Well, actually, that's it for the toggle component. I'll show you how you can use it in a native form. So let's grab that Control Shift P, wrap it in a Q dash form component, and then we'll say Q dash button and set the type equal to submit, and then set the label equal to submit. And now when I click on this, notice that it submits to the page, but it hasn't actually submitted any data. And that's because we need to set a name on the Q toggle as well. So let's say name is equal to toggled, save it. And now when I submit the page, well, we've got it on an indeterminate. So let's change that to true. And there we go. Now toggled is equal to true. So that's how we use it in a native form component. Now let's get rid of the form component. There is one more thing that I want to show you. And that's that you can use Q toggle via the Q option group component. So this might be something that you want to do rather than using the Q toggle component directly. I'll show you what I mean. Q dash option dash group. And then we can say V dash model is equal to selection. All right. And now we can throw some options on here. Let's make it an array. And then we'll have some objects that have a label. And let's set the first one equal to blue. And we'll set the value of that equal to blue, save it. And let's set the type equal to toggle. Looks like I'm doing something wrong here. Oh no, that's working. And I don't really want to determine it here. So let's set the value equal to blue by default. Refresh the page. When using a toggle with the Q option group, we want to be modeling an array. So let's turn this into an array. All right, there we go. So now it's toggling blue on and off. And then you can easily just add new options in here. Blue, we could change that to green. We could change this one to orange. So in many situations, it might make more sense just to use an option group. So there you have it. That's Quasar's Q toggle component. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next video.